Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about synthesizing information, particularly the synthesis matrix and how to do that. So to start off with, synthesizing information really is based on the principle that scholarship is a conversation. Research is a social process. You're not just doing this in a vacuum without consulting other researchers. It's part of a huge community and the community communicates through their publications. So each paper is referring to other researchers' work and building off of that, tearing that down, um, it is a big exchange of thoughts and ideas and information. And you are entering this conversation and hopefully adding to it. And so this is really to talk about what your first steps are to enter the conversation. So synthesizing information is to put together things or sources, information, making connection between them to create a bigger whole. And so as you are listening into these conversations, you want to look for major themes and ideas and focusing on them and pulling out the, the ideas and not just dropping in summaries or quotes to show how the information is related. And you're going to do this in a way that merges or connects those into something new and in, in, in a meaningful way. And so you need to identify what the conversations are and how your own thoughts and fit into that. And the biggest part of this, or the biggest tip, the biggest tip I have for this is that when you're synthesizing information, when you're creating and writing your, your articles and papers, you need to use your own voice. You are guiding your readers through your writing to create new meaning, which is going to be supported by the evidence you've collected from these conversations you've been listening to. And you're using these information sources you've collected to make your own point through citing them to lend more authority to yourself. And this example here is kind of going to show you different levels of synthesis from bad to good. And so I'm going to start with student D. And these highlighted portions represent the material that is used from other information sources or what they are hopefully citing in their papers. And as you can see, student D is an example of using or borrowing heavily from someone else's work and only changing a few words here and there to kind of add their own voice to it. And so this example is not synthesis because it is only using one source, not using their own voice. And so really this is plagiarism because they are not adding anything to what someone else has already said. Now student C is more of an example of synthesis because you can see there are multiple sources, but once again, they're not using their own voice and this is just copy and paste patchwork and is not really creating something new because there's not your own voice being that guide. Now student B is getting better at using their own voice. However, it's not really synthesizing anything because it's only using one source which could be okay if it was something like a book review where you only are commenting on one source, but truth synthesis is going to be what student A is created here, where you have multiple sources, but they are only using them as a support to their own voice and their own assertions. And that's really the goal you have when creating and doing research. So as you are entering the, the scholarly conversation, you need to listen to what is currently happening. So reading and reviewing the le literature or research on your topic, um, collecting those sources that have something to say about what you're going to talk about that can support your own ideas and lend you some of that authority. Um, and the, way, the best way to do this is to index those sources into a synthesis matrix, which will help you keep track of your main ideas that you want to talk about in your paper and how the sources you've collected are talking about those ideas. And it's a way to visualize and compare what these different sources say about that same idea or those same ideas that you have. So a synthesis matrix is basically just a table or a spreadsheet where each row represents a main idea 
and each column represents a different information source. And so as you zoom in into one of these columns, you have the main ideas in the first one as the header column to keep track of those main ideas for each row. And then in those columns, you're going to have short descriptions of how each source talks about that main idea if it does. You want to keep these really short. You don't want to drop huge chunks of information or quotes in there because the bigger those cells are, the harder it's going to be to see the different sources and how they talk about the topics and how they work together. So this is a good chance to practice your summarizing and paraphrasing skills. And if you do find a quote that you know you want to use, maybe just put the first part of it in, in the quotation marks with a page number so you know exactly where it came from. And so here's an example that's all filled out of someone building a synthesis matrix. They got their main ideas. As you can see, they're short. And you have just simple summaries about how this source talks about those main points. And maybe it doesn't talk about all of them. As you can see, the last box is empty. So as you then build your synthesis matrix, you're going to keep adding to it and expanding with new main points and new sources. And it's going to end up looking a lot more like this. As you can see with these four sources talking about the same four main points, not every cell is full because not every single source is going to be talking about the same things because they're researching different aspects of the same topic. They have different perspectives and experiences. They're doing different research. And so you're going to have to pull little bits from different pieces to put together a new whole. And you can visualize more of how your research is going when you can see it like this. So each row is going to be talking about a main point, which could become a paragraph or a section in your paper. And so you know that the section you talk about this topic, these are the sources you're going to cite in them. And then when you talk about this topic, you're going to cite these two sources. And you can easily create your citations because you know what source talks about what and where. You can also learn about the state of your research by looking at the empty cells and seeing what that's telling you. So in this instance, you have one article and so far it's only talking about one of your main points. So you have to kind of learn more about your article here to see, is it helpful? Maybe it's a really short article and it's not gonna have a lot in it. And if it's supporting a topic or a main point you really wanna talk about, maybe that's okay. Maybe you just haven't spent enough time in this article. And if you read it more, you might see spots where it will talk about that main point. Or maybe when it comes down to it, you might find out that it's not really that relevant and maybe you won't end up using that one. It's really up to you and what you know about your topic and your research and your sources. But this is an easy way to catch that maybe this source is not doing enough for you and maybe it could be doing more or maybe it's not necessary. You also have instances like this where this one source is really only talking, the only source talking about these main points. And in this case, you need to think about, are these main points helpful? Is this a main point you want to talk about? If so, you need to find more sources because once again, you can't have just one source to support a main point and have good synthesis. And so maybe you will do another search to find sources more likely to talk about this topic or this main point within your topic. Or maybe it's a main point that you think about it and decide this is not a direction I want to spend time on and you might want to just drop that main point. And so this is where you can really see how your research is going. And that really is the usefulness of a synthesis matrix is that you can visually see how your research is going and what you need and how the conversation works together. And it can be a really helpful tool for doing that research and really creating your synthesis so that you can write a really good paper.